So when we talk about Yahweh Shai or the Black Christ, we're talking about an image that was set up that represents us. This is part four. Make sure I implore you to get parts one through three. Let's go for the dismount. Article written by Jose Dallas Cruz, Dallas Cruz, Paqueco, Rojas, PhD. All right, let's go. So we've been talking about this El Cristo Negro, okay? This preliminary study of the history of El Cristo Negro, the Esquipulas, emphasizes its importance as a sacred Roman Catholic figure. And who's giving us our Christianity? It's coming straight out the Vatican, Jack. So the original figure that you're getting in your Christian church today used to be an El Cristo Negro. And you got to say, why? What does it symbolize? A sacred Catholic figure infused by ancient Mesoamerican deities and rituals. So they infused another figure with another figure that's called syncretic. What was the figure? <laughs> I mean, how did they come up to this conclusion? This is a fusion of another figure with another figure. Well, you already know. <laughs> they had to tie him in somehow. I mean, you already know they had to tie him in somehow, right? They had to tie him in somehow, y'all. You know they had to tie him in somehow, right? So we're talking about an infusion of a figure with another figure. Got it. Because how do we get to these quetzals? How do we get to these beautiful quetzals, these quetzal quetzalcoatls? How do we get to the quetzal? Let's go. Let's go. For the dismount, man. We are just surfing the wave. Because we're talking about the real Joshua, not the fusion. We're talking about the tall text, right? Like Texas, tall Texas. We're going to get to Sylvanus told Texas for the dismount. Their leader, Kitsakota, wore a long robe marked with crosses. The sign identifies him as the one who crosses. Crosses what? He's crossing over what? We talking frequency? What are we talking about? Kitsakota attained the land of promise. He made it to the promised land with his people. But we're just talking Joshua. And the Mormons know this, man. <laughs> That's why they're connecting. That's why they're connecting this. So this is out that same Mormon document that they're connecting Kitsakota with who? <laughs> Did you know that they accept Kitsakota wholeheartedly as their Christus, right? Because we got this before in Mexico, Great Central Mesa, where Ixtico Kitalo lived, the name by which the fair god of ancient America was generally known as Kitsakota. Kitzel was the name of the beautiful bird with the resplendent long green feathers. We call him the Coalto is the ancient Mexican word for dragon, dragon or serpent. So now we got these lofty, lofty cloud dragons, right? Flying high in the cloud force. Flying high in the cloud force. So what's this representing? It's taking the Zeus character and tying him in with the actual Joshua character so that our brothers can, they can be, you know, completely enamored in this syncretic. The essay proposes that this syncretic acculturation of Christianity with pre-Hispanic religion. Uh oh, that's before Spain. Right. We're not talking Hispanic. Right. Because that has to do with Spain. We're not talking Spain in America, Managa. Before that, pre-Hispanic laid the foundation for a particular kind of cultural and social relationship between conquered peoples. Whoa! Whoa! So this figure that was infused by this ancient, you know, energy, this Joshua energy, they infused their Zeus into it, right? Their Roman God. They infused it into you. For what? This laid the foundation for a particular kind of cultural, social relationship between conquered people and the conqueror and Spain and North America. This laid, this figure laid the foundation for you as a conquered Naga to be with them. 
Wow. <laughs> you know, I don't even be expecting to find this stuff sometimes, but Drop Nation, Drop Nation, Drop Nation got the water because you're just talking about El Cristo Negro. In this whole situation, now we got this miraculous revelation attributed to the black Christ convey a clear sense of indigenous identity. I guess so, because this is identity theft of the indigenous Naga. And what's going on here, man? What's going on here, man? Can we just talking the framer and the shaper, huh? And we've already established that this, according to this father, right? Spanish conquest, right? After Father Domenico de Vicio, he used their root quiche names to refer to the power of the Old Testament only. So again, I'm not breaking it up, man. They've already separated. They just didn't let you know that they separated. Because we're just talking about the Naga's indigenous identity. We're talking the real Joshua that led the people into the land of... <laughs> The land of promise, man. We're talking milk and honey, right? Joshua led the people into the land of milk and honey. Or Kitsukooltu. Right, right. The Kitsu bird serpent, right? So we got this dragon connection. The Koltu, the dragon, ancient symbol of Israel's Messiah. The dragon, huh? Moses used his dragon staff. Was preserved by Israel for what? 500 years. Right, so when the dragons left, then they began to what make uh, graven images of them, and that's when they went off worshiping the dragon, worshiping this angel, worshiping the frequency, worshiping Moses, worshiping Joshua, just like they're doing here, because they're saying Kitsukoto is their Jesus, is their savior, idolatry. We talking Joshua as the one who will return, right? We talking Joshua just like David as another one who will return. Well, over here they got this. Uh, they got this flow. Yeah, man. It says, and at the time he went about taking leave of the people. He told them that in time to come, in a year which should be called, <laughs> you tell me, he would return, and then his doctrine would be received, and his children would be masters and possess the land, man. This ain't talking Christianity, my naga. This is talking about our prophets returning. We're talking about fulfilling the script, my naga. We're talking about coming home, my naga. Man. And we're talking about the virtue. And this is what they've done. Oh, they say the true answer is that Jesus the Christ visited ancient America and gave his people the true plan of salvation. Wow. Or is the true history that right here, man, Right over here, we already have a sign. We are possessing the land. We already have the flow. We already got the cross of Kitsukooltu. We already got Yahawasha, Joshua, already leading his people to the promised land, rocking with the rainbow dragon. <laughs> Again, man, this symbol was preserved by Israel for over 500 years, man. I'm talking about Moshe's staff, man. And everybody that this dragon bit in Numbers 21 got life. Everybody the dragon bit got life. All right, back to the Papa Vua for the dismount. Here we shall gather the manifestation, the declaration, the accounting of the sowing and the dawning by the framer and the shaper. Hawa, she who has born children, let's go. And he who has begotten sons, and they are as they are called, Hanapu Possum and Hanapu Coyote, Great White Bakari and Kooti, Sovereign and Kitso, Serpent or Dragon, Heart of Lake, Heart of Sea. This is your mother and your father. Wisdom, right? Let's go. Creator of the green earth, right? Mama. And creator of the blue sky, with my right hand I beat it out. Rakwa, with my right hand I met out the sky. I met out the firmament. And you put it all perspective in the Forbidden Histories of America. Nehemiah Theodoric reconquered the American Empire of Kalelu, 775 AD. Sylvanus Tall Texas, right? We're talking Toltex. Or Solomon the Builder. Israel the Third went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico's grandson Machir, right? Priest of Kitsukooto, let's go, Tapuzin. 